Each spring and fall, all of the free-flying condors in California are trapped for health evaluations. Were it not for the lead issue, these human interactions would be far less frequent. The trapping events are also an opportunity to acquire samples from the birds that inform scientific research. Get a better understanding of the sort of long-term or chronic uh, lead exposure that these condors face. We started to evaluate their feathers and basically uh, looking at the lead concentration and the isotopic signature of the lead in the feather as it's growing. Every day the feather will grow about 0.2 inches and so we can b basically track and look at a couple inches of feather and say within those four days the condor had high lead exposure or low lead exposure and if we put all those pieces together we can reconstruct the exposure history for the condor over the whole time frame of feather growth and for condors that could be about four months. This feather vein section from uh, Condor 255 uh, down from Bitter Creek, and it's uh, part of the right primary number two collected on June 5th, 2010. And so this feather was sent to us so that we could analyze it and understand what the lead exposure history was for 255 during this time frame of feather growth. So from these feather samples that we're uh, receiving from the field team, we're realizing that California condors are exposed to high concentrations of lead much more frequently and to much higher concentrations than we would have previously thought from the blood samples. So it's giving us a much greater understanding for how often are these condors lead poisoned, how acute is the lead poisoning event, how long does the lead poisoning last, and from this we're getting a much better understanding of really how substantial and significant the lead poisoning problem is for the recovery of the California condor. So one other thing that we do in our lab is we look at what does the lead look like. We do an isotopic analysis. So it's basically just a fingerprint of what the lead looks like. From doing that we can understand what the source of lead was that poisoned the bird. So for example, here's condor 303 and she died of lead poisoning. And when she died they removed this fragment from her digestive tract. So we received the fragment plus the tissues when she died, and we analyzed it and found out that lead's fingerprint basically matched the fingerprint in the condor's tissues. So we know the lead from this fragment is the lead that ultimately did kill the condor. In the vast majority of cases, all of the birds that are lead poisoned, their lead fingerprint looks exactly like the lead fingerprint from lead-based ammunition. In the spring of 2012, Finkelstein's work made international headlines when published in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Science. Her five-year study found that lead from ammunition was very near entirely to blame for the condor's frequent health problems. The study concluded that the species could never be conservation program independent as long as spent lead ammunition was found in their habitat.